Ladies and gentlemen, today I want to explore a profound question with you. Do we really need a Leviathan, a powerful state authority, to maintain order in our society? Or is the capacity for cooperation deeply ingrained in our nature, whether shaped by evolution or by a higher power that some call God? Let's begin with the thoughts of the great philosopher Thomas Hobbes. In his famous work Leviathan, Hobbes described human nature as fundamentally selfish and driven by distrust. Without a strong central authority, he argued, we would descend into a war of all against all. Only the fear of punishment from a supreme state power, what Hobbes called the Leviathan, could stop people from betraying one another and pursuing their own self-interest without regard for others. But what if Hobbes was wrong? What if we could test his ideas in a modern context using a computer simulation? That's exactly what I did. I designed a strategy based on Hobbes's reasoning and called it Hobbes. This strategy followed his strict logic. At first, Hobbes cooperates, but not out of trust. He cooperates because of the fear of a leviathan, an authority that might punish him for acting against the rules. Hobbes then carefully observes his opponent's behavior. If his opponent cooperates most of the time, Hobbes assumes they are subject to a leviathan, a force keeping them in line. However, if the opponent defects in more than half of their moves, Hobbes concludes that they are not under any authority. In that case, he switches to defection, seeing it as justified retaliation. One more crucial aspect, the simulation included a 10% error factor reflecting real-life scenarios where people make mistakes. A player might intend to cooperate but accidentally defect. Hobbes took this into account and only considered defections that couldn't be explained as justified responses. If his opponent was merely reacting to an error, Hobbes didn't hold it against them. Now, here's the critical point. I pitted Hobbes against all strategies from Axelrod's famous first tournament and all the strategies available from Axelrod's second tournament through the Axelrod Library. These strategies were developed by some of the most brilliant game theorists, whose aim wasn't necessarily to create moral strategies but simply to win the game. Among these strategies was random, which made decisions completely at random. There were also two well-known versions of tit-for-tat, the strict classic version and the more forgiving variant. The result? Roughly 92% of the opponents demonstrated cooperative behavior. They acted as if they were following a higher rule, even though there was no leviathan in the simulation. They behaved well, without the need for an overarching authority to keep them in check. This outcome is a compelling counter-argument to Hobbes's belief that a strong central authority is necessary to maintain social order. Nearly 92% of the strategies, designed by highly intelligent minds without moral objectives, exhibited cooperative behavior. This suggests that cooperation may be a natural part of human behavior. This leads us to a deeper question. Why do we cooperate? Is it evolution that has taught us, over millions of years, that cooperation increases our chances of survival? Or is it something more, a higher power, that has instilled in us the ability to work together? Perhaps, and this is the most profound thought, these two perspectives are not in conflict. What some call God, others may call evolution. Both may be pointing to the same underlying truth. If the principles of cooperation are so deeply rooted in nature, then we must ask ourselves, do we really need a Leviathan? Hobbes believed that human nature was too selfish and destructive to function without a powerful authority. But our simulation suggests otherwise. We can cooperate and maintain social order even without a Leviathan. Perhaps it is nature, or what some may call God, that has shaped us into cooperative beings. The evidence seems clear. We do not need an all-powerful state to force us into cooperation. Cooperation happens naturally, driven by the forces of evolution or something even greater. Ladies and gentlemen, after this journey through the ideas of Hobbes' evolution and religion, 
I leave you with a simple yet profound question. Can we let go of the Leviathan? Whether through nature or through God, we have the ability to cooperate. And perhaps, just perhaps, these natural forces are strong enough to guide us without the need for an all-powerful authority to oversee every move. Thank you. My name's Hops, and I find myself alive, resurrected in a strange place, trying to survive. I look around, wondering what's the game, new environment, but my rules are the same. First thing I do, I choose to cooperate, not cause I trust, but cause I fear my fate. If there's a love fight, then watch it from high. One wrong move, and I know I could die. I'm thinking, if the others betray and defect, then it's in their nature, no need to reflect. It's every man for himself, like I always knew. If that's the case, I'll betray them too. But if most of them choose to act right, staying in line, avoiding the fight, then I figure there's a force keeping them in check. A Leviathan with power to snap your neck. So I play it cool, cause I'm sure there's a rule keeping us all from acting like fools. If they behave, then I'll behave too. Better safe than sorry, that's what I do I'm watching the game, I'm keeping my notes Tracking who's loyal, who's cutting the throats But here's the twist, as the rounds unfold Most of them play fair, no betrayal, no cold Wait a second, this ain't real, it's just a simulation No Leviathan here, no grand regulation I was thinking there's power behind every move But this game's got no master, nothing to prove I realize now, there's no leader to fear No higher command, no authority here Yet still, most players, they do not betray They follow a path in their own way. So now I'm thinking, do we really need that king to enforce cooperation to make the world sing? Maybe not. Maybe nature's got its own code, a system that runs that keeps us on the road. Some call it nature, some say it's divine. Either way, it keeps us all in line. There's no Leviathan, no ruler above, but principles guide us more than just love. It's wider than sympathy, deeper than care, an instinct we've shaped through the ages we share. It's mutual aid and the strength that we find in living together. Creatures combined. Don't, 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 don't,